Broadway's My Beach, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beach, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. The spill of August nighttime is beyond crest now, has broken, begun its down surge. And in the empty avenue, there are trailings of phosphorescence and tricklings of stillness, time before dawn. And on Broadway, time of the drifting echoes, open trumpet of the all-night jam session, careening through stilled streets. On the wind, the furling of a woman's laughter from a bar long since closed. And in light pool of street lamp, the performer, song and puppet dance and sprawl of the drunkard. Near death of night, near time of dawn, chill, and somewhere a leaf turns color, and a drunkard weeps. And at police headquarters, the quality of stillness and loss of the in-between time focused and held in the staring eyes of a woman who sits primly in the clean smock given her by the matron, whose fingers are ceaseless in the touching of her face, her mouth, her throat. Smiles loosely, sits even more erect for the questioning of Detective Muggerman. Nothing that happened here tonight registered, is that it, Miss Scott? And Miss Scott then breathes in deeply, then giggles. <laughs> I ask you funny things and they tickle you, huh, Miss Scott? Because you're still drunk, Miss Scott, still so loaded Take you can't... Take it easy, Muggerman. Yeah. Oh, wait. Wait. Yes, Miss Scott? This nice clean dress. You must thank that lovely woman who let me wear it. You must let me give her something. A gift. Money. My purse. Where is my purse? They've stolen my baby. Uh, don't worry about it, Miss Scott. <laughs> no. No, we've got your purse. The officer brought it in when he... Oh, booked... you must thank him for me. Yeah, we'll do that. He'll appreciate it. Another thing he'd appreciate a whole lot, him and me and the lieutenant here. Something but... that I could do for him and for you? For both of you? Just tell us what you were doing in that car the officer pulled you out of. What you were doing trying to start it without a key. What you were doing in a dress splattered with blood. Blood? Uh, <laughs> you mustn't be mean with me. Now, just tell us how come your dress is covered with blood, Miss Scott, and how come there isn't a mark on you or a cutter. I'll tell you if you really want to know. <sighs> Coax me. Tell us, Miss Scott. A terrible, dreadful shriek. And scarlet. Deep, deep, deep scarlet. And crying. And... Get her to Dr. Simpson, Ogerman. Yeah. <laughs> and Miss Scott, Claire, you come with me. Huh? I'll be very nice. That's right. Danny, I got the re... The lady, Danny, she looks... What do you got, you know? The report from technical, Danny, analysis of the blood found on Miss Scott's dress, established as human blood, mm -hmm. classified A, B, and O, two types from two separate people, not hers. Hey, you come with me, huh, Miss Scott? That's right. Well, help Muggerman, you know, get Miss Scott to Dr. Sinsky. Sure. That's right, lady. Now, uh, you just let me take your other arm. And Claire Scott took Muggerman's arm and then Tartaglia's and brushed her cheek against his coat and then tilted her head upward. To him, coy look and half-closed eyes and smile tightening inward and slantings of new morning light that held dust of corridor, broken, fusing again as the men helped her, walked it slowly with her to where Dr. Sinsky was. And corridor empty now and gleam of dust particles in established pattern of upflowing, downflowing currents. <laughs> Morning is the officer who had found Claire Scott in blood-splattered dress, drunk, trying to start a car without a key. Officer who had tried to question her and was whispered to and clung to and wept over. And she made no sense, Lieutenant, so I thought I'd better bring her in, Lieutenant. And morning is the quiet flow of talk outside a darkened room from Dr. Sinsky, who has many learned idioms and which decoded become Claire Scott is in deep state of shock. Sedatives have been administered. After a while, maybe, she will be articulate. After a while, perhaps. No one can tell, Danny. And walk away from him, back to the office. And morning has now become Gino Tartaglia. Uh, you haven't slept, have you, Danny? No. And nothing to eat also? No. 
Well, the least that can be said for it is that it has been friendly. Sympathico, huh, Danny? Huh? That I also, being on night duty, have not slept nor broken bread. Just coffee black, whilst down amongst the records. Records? Where sticking a nose in, one may come up with the info that Claire Scott was reported missing about a month ago, in July, to be exact. Oh? July 16, July 17, to be exact. Said missing person's report made out by one Robert Hill. You got Hill's address? And telephone number, which I called. Which he is where the desk clerk told me. Mr. Hill is out of town. From which I got Mr. Hill's out of town forwarding address and to which I wired for him to come back home pronto. Well, you did real good, you know. Because there is a thing about night duty, Danny, that gives... Danny, noon already. You haven't slept, I haven't slept. You haven't eaten, I haven't eaten. And Mrs. T would be delighted to accommodate... Uh, that is, if you... What say, Danny? Just this one. Come on, Gina, I'll take you home. And drive Gino home. And on the invitation, thank Gino anyway. And drive cross town in the apartment with a pull-down bed and pull down blinds and do the trick you know with facing windows calculated to stir a breeze through an August heated room, but never does. Read briefly of how it is on the Riviera this time of year and the tricks those other people use to stir a breeze. And close your eyes and wonder where the dream is. It doesn't come. Just something about a swift ebbing face and you can't remember why. And suddenly it's six o'clock in the evening, a little after, and think maybe it's getting a little cooler because sleep is easier. Up and shower and dress. And the corner delicatessen whose chef knew a European secret having to do with salami and eggs. And back to headquarters and Detective Muggerman. Sleep well, Danny? Oh, pretty good. I'm happy. What's on your mind? Claire Scott walked out of here a couple hours ago. Lawyer? Yeah. Friendly lady type barrister girl. Claire and she called each other by first names, and one of them lent the other a lipstick. I didn't observe which. Well, what else? Lawyer's name, Janet Fenn. Said she was taking Claire home with her to look after her. Right, here's the address where Miss Fenn assured me, but assured me... You would find her and Janet. Mm -hmm. Miss Fenn is always assuring people. You know, that type. Oh, thanks. See you later, Marilyn. I assure you, Mr. Clover, that Claire's in capable hands. Well, I'm sure she is, Miss Fenn. Where is she? In there. I'm aware that you, as her lawyer... And her friend. And her friend, that you know some reason to keep me from talking to her right now. Exactly right. And... You go right in and chat as much as you like for about two minutes. Thanks. You decent, dear? Of course you are. Mr. Clover wants to speak with you. Who? Come in, Mr. Clover. Him. Mr. Clover of the police. I don't remember anything, Mr. Clover. You'd been drinking... Alone? I don't remember anything, Mr. Clover. How did you get that blood on you? I don't remember anything, Mr. Clover. She doesn't remember anything, Mr. Clover. No, I don't. You see? Uh-huh. You just read. That's what the doctor told me to do. Don't worry about anything. I know. I know. You just read. Let's go, Mr. Clover. Sad, isn't it? It always is. Well, she has anything to worry about now, at last. You'll take care of her, won't you? Just a respite, that's all she needs. From what? What's usual for a girl like that. Parties. That's right. And men. And men, and men, and men, and men. Shall I go on? Just as far as their names? Who bothers to know them? Another chap each week, start Monday with a new one. Claire will get better as long... Pardon me. Yes? Yes, he's here. For you, Mr. Clover. Danny Clover speaking. Muggerman, Danny, got pencil and paper? Uh-huh. Write down the address, 1313 West 16th. Got it? Mm-hmm, yeah. Why, what's the matter? Homicide. Can you meet me? Right away. That right away you just said means you're leaving, doesn't it? You must be a very cagey lawyer, Miss Finn. You'll never, never know. Bye. <laughs> Come on, Danny, I got something to show you. Pleasures of being a cop. The memories you make. In here. 
something, huh? The room was a cot. And on the cot, a man, bearded. And death. And against the cot, on the floor beside it, another man, younger, small. Dead. The room was a cot. And death around it. And a chipped enamel pitcher in another corner. And a knife stuck into the plaster of another corner. And dull streaks connecting all of it. And the room was where two men had been murdered. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat. Written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. And starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Two teenage youths play a spine-tingling game with violent death tomorrow night on the CBS radio dramatic program called Escape. Listen to the fascinating story of the game on most of these same stations when the star's address pulls out all the stops for thrills with another smashing edition of Escape. Yes, tomorrow night, where America listens most for drama, too, on CBS radio. <laughs> An August day comes to Broadway like a rosy promise. And you drift into it because all the other dreams have drifted away. But all the yesterdays of your life never counted. And on this day of warmth and no shadows, you leave them behind. Stand on a street corner and beat down the scream in your throat. And the hours of August melt into each other. And the sunshine is for a long time. Night is far away and dimly heard. So hug all of it close. These are the moments. These are the memories and the dreams. And near the end of it, east where I was, in a double murder, in the place tenement, and Detective Muggerman's comment. Some place, huh? Hard to believe that people could live here, huh? Yeah. Never seen a dirtier place in your life? How do you figure it, Muggerman? About these two men. You mean Claire Scott? Uh-huh. It could be a pretty gruesome coincidence, couldn't it? Well, we'll know when she gets here. Let's go out in the hall and have a cigarette. Yeah. Hey, what would a woman like Claire Scott have to do with a place like this? If she killed them, she'd have a lot to do with them, huh? What just hey. doesn't be... Hey, you too. Oh, don't look at me, Danny. I told Adler not to let anybody in or out of the building. Hey, yeah. Your name's Clover and Muggerman, police officers. How'd you get in here? How do you think, brother? The man in the uniform out front said I was the boy you wanted to see. And what's your name? Miller. M.N. Miller. Maury Norton Miller. Where do you live? Next door. What's on your mind, Mr. Miller? Hey, so about the Krogers? They've been killed like that? What's their name? The Krogers, I just told you. Mr. Kroger and Paul and Harry. Uh, Mr. Kroger was the father and Paul and Harry his sons, right? Sure. Mr. Kroger had a beard? Ah, it's a tip off he's dead the way you said it. What did Paul and Harry look like? Yeah, Paul, nice-looking kid, about 19. Harry, well... Well, what? Well, uh, six foot three and this broad. But... Uh, not real good up here. But muscles? Hey, you ever look in those health magazines? That's the kind he's got. Bigger, even. He's... Take uh... Mr. Miller in and let him make sure, my brother. All right. Come on, Mr. Miller. In here. Hey, there she is, Danny, complete with lawyer. Miss Scott, Miss Ben, how do you feel, Miss Scott? I'm all right. I assure you she is. What's the trouble here? There's been a double homicide and we're... And What? Let him talk. Well, I assure Let you... Let him that... talk. I want Miss Scott to... What about it, Michael? George Kroger, father, and Paul Kroger, younger son. That right, Mr. Miller? It's rain. Goodbye, Mr. Miller, and thanks a lot. Is that all you want to know? We'll call you. Well, goodbye, all. Mr. Kroger and Paul, Danny. Another son, Harry, is not with us. I'll get a description from Mr. Miller. I'll get the description and phone it in. Let's get an all point. Yeah. Mr. Miller? Now yeah. what? Wait a minute. Oh, stop it, Janet. What do you want me to do, Mr. Clover? There are two dead men in there, and I... And you want me to look at them and tell you if I remembered them from last night? Has anything about last night come back to you? No. I told her what's happened more gently than you would, I assure you. Did you want Miss Fenn to go in there with you? No, Claire. No. Okay. There's not enough light in here, so you'll have... I'm not afraid. There was probably never enough light in this place. No. No what? I've never seen these men before. And you're sure of it? You'll not believe this, perhaps, but I've never known a bearded man in my life. All right. Let's get out of here. Well, was it terrible, Claire? 
I'm talking. Catch him, Mr. Clover, quickly. Catch her. Catch the slow, twisting fall of Claire Scott. And somehow the gentle slide of her face against her cheek, chill, moist. And her hair then against your mouth, scented, moist. Get her out into the air. Get her to my car. And carry her then outside to the lawyer's car. And put her down. Gentle. Be gentle with me. And from the lawyer's purse, the small jeweled bottle. Smelling salt, Mr. Clover. Claire and I are never without them. She or I. Dainty girls. Fainting girls. And jeweled bottle for Claire to breathe now. And in a while... Oh, damn it. You fainted, little girl. The man, this man here, he showed you something ugly. You just pass out. Take me home, Janet. If it's all right with the man, maybe if I assure him I'm the one to take charge. As I have before, as I am now, as I will again. A nod to her. Watch her dare and conquer the traffic that has swarmed to the violence of murdered father and son. Phone call to headquarters then. Sergeant Gino Tartaglia speaking. Be told by the sergeant that the all points bulletin on the other son, Harry Kroger, had hit the teletypes and squad car radios. So far, no response. Be told another thing from Missing Persons Bureau that at the time when Claire Scott had been missing for two days in July, two people had called to inquire if anything had been heard of her or seen. And get their addresses. Something else, Danny. That Robert Hill who reported her missing in the first place, he checked into his hotel about an hour ago. Kendall Hotel on Lexington and 34th. And thank the sergeant for hang up. And go now to the people who for two days had felt the loss of Claire Scott. And for the first, had been her employer. A woman who ran a fashion school who had had to dismiss Claire against her will. The male personnel had balked. Claire had leaned over their work much too closely and fiddled with their hair, distracting, dreadfully distracting. And a young woman's walk yet to be demonstrated, if the boss wanted them to turn out chic girl models, that is. And what does a boss do? She sacks, she dismisses without honors. But a boss is curious. What can have happened to Claire? And the second then, a boy of 20, who had seen Claire on a beach, was surprised how easy it was to talk to her and interesting. Then got more surprised and angry and confused at how easy it was for all the boys in his crowd to talk to her, even while Claire stroked his feet, warming them, she said, from the cold, cold sea. And he hasn't seen her since. And in a hotel room then, Robert Hill who had reported her missing in the first place, who had come back from Atlantic City because... That wire from you police hit me right in the middle of a business conference with a brunette, Mr. Clover. Miss Sedalia, Missouri of 1953, she was. Well, you can go back to her after we talk. <laughs> you boys really don't dig timing, do you? Now, by now, Miss Sedalia of 1953... I so... wanted to talk to you about Claire Scott. Oh? Well, then I can get back to glorious Atlantic City sooner than I thought. Oh, you want to hand me that train schedule, Mr.? Uh, a month ago, you were very interested in Claire Scott. Enough to take the time to report her missing. That was a month ago. I was a different boy then. Oh, yeah. Different. Younger by a month. Women like Claire were fascination to me. Kicks I never knew. I'm older now. Wiser. Settled down. She did it to me. Go on. From the minute I met Claire in a cocktail bar, from that minute, if Claire was away from me for two minutes, an hour, a day, I flipped. I went out of my head. I began calling hospitals, bus stations, even police. But now... Now what? Now, I'm happy I got no tensions anymore. Yes, I'm happy I don't have to walk a street with Claire on my arm and lose her because a gentleman remembered to tip his hat. Oh, this makes me happy. Also very sad. Also, in Atlantic City, they take care of Sam. We can go back now if you want, Mr. Hill. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> What do you want, Michaelman? I'm waiting down here for you, Danny, so you wouldn't go up to your office first. So I could show you something first. What? Down the hall, Danny, through there. Where I want to show you. Well, that way's to the morgue. Yeah, isn't it? All right, come on, Danny. They brought this man in maybe a little over an hour ago. Gave me plenty of time to check identification, a couple other things. I had plenty of time, Danny. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? 
You're tired too, huh, Danny? This one, Danny. Harry Kroger. Brother and son of those two men we found murdered in that tenement. The boy the neighbor said was all muscle. Pump full of 22 caliber bullets. Chest, arms. Harry Kroger, Danny, the boy we've been looking for. Okay, my friend. I got more to show you, Danny. Over here. This bin. These are the clothes they found him in. Those? You agree they're loud, huh? Fancy, huh? Yeah, jacket. And what is this color? Some kind of green? Hmm. And these lapels. You ever seen lapels like these, Danny? Got a pink carnation embroidered into the left one. And these pants. Oh, I don't keep up with these things. Men wear pants like these now? You said you checked a couple other things. Oh, yeah, yeah. All these clothes are all with the same label. Dino's down on Mott. I called him. They told me their front window was smashed in with a brick a little over a month ago. Clothes stolen off the dummy. Description matches these, Danny. Let's go up to my office, huh? Yeah, I figured you'd be interested. A family wiped out, Danny. Father, two sons, who lived like that. Cot, filthy room. Father and one boy cut to death. And that one, Harry, filled full of bullets. Hey, wait up a minute, huh, Danny? Sure, Gino. Uh, thank you, Danny. What is it, Gino? They brought in Harry Kroger, Danny. I made a routine check through records. Found out something about that Harry Kroger. What, Gino? You know? Well, last month, his brother Paul reported him missing. Said Harry wasn't the kind of boy to take care of himself. He and Harry's father were worried, so please... When was he missing, Gino? Two days, Danny. July 16, 17. July 18, he came home, and his brother called in and said, forget it. Harry was okay. Margaret. Yeah. Gino, get Danny a squad car. I'll be waiting outside. <laughs> Oh. Hello, Miss Fenn. Do you mind if I come in? Why? Talk to you and talk to your client. Well, I don't mind a situation like that. Come on in. We were having an aperitif. What's your taste? Nothing, thanks. Claire. Claire, honey. Huh? He doesn't want to sing. Who is he? Why don't you turn around and look? You'll see. He won't. It's from the police. They sent a fellow. The fellow who was with you when you fainted. And caught me in his arms. I'm going to turn. I'm turning. Hi. Hi. Thanks for catching me. Sure. It's been pleasant, but now she's a client, so what do you want? I want to know where your client was last month when she disappeared for two days. I never knew either. Claire? Yes? Answer the question. Which was? Where were you when you were gone those two days? Newport. She likes boats. She was in Newport. With Harry Kroger. Ask you a question, Mr. Clover? Sure. You're pretty sure about everything, aren't you? Yeah. Claire. What? Those two days in Newport, what did you do? Teach him how to sail? He'd never seen a sailboat before. He was like a child. Now on, I'm going to listen and make notes. Janet. You're a dear friend. You met him. Wasn't he funny? Could hardly talk. <laughs> The way he talks. She's going to need help, isn't she, Mr. Clover? A whole lot. There's a history that goes with her. We'll get all that out and we'll find a way to help her. All I want to do is know for sure. Ask her. Did you kill Harry Kroger, Miss Scott? In July one night. You just go on and tell him. I was in the car. The car wouldn't start. And he leaned in through the window and he grinned. That's the first time you saw him. I'm not drunk now. Go on. And he started my car. And he was a puppy and a baby, and he'd never seen a sailboat. So I took him where there were a lot of them. And he took you seriously, didn't he? When Newport was all over, he kept hanging around. I told him to go away, Scat. But he didn't. Whatever you told him in Newport to a man like that would be the truth for as long as he lived. So he killed his father and his brother and took you there. Uh. Showed you what he'd done for you. Erased the symbol, cleaned out the dirt, worthy of you. Some line. The outlandish clothes he'd stolen, to be worthy of you. Crazy. But you shot him. He'd showed me what he'd done first. 
His father, brother, and the place made me look. And I got blood all over me. Yes. Yes, I shot him. Get her things, Miss Fenn. Right here. Dear. What? Put this on and let's go with Mr. Clover. Why do you talk to me like that for? I told you I'm not drunk. Didn't I say I wasn't drunk, Mr. Clover? Yes. See? Then let's all of us go. When night turns into Broadway, the street plumes into flame, flings reflections hard into the shadows. It's a blare that ebbs and screams and ebbs again when dawn comes, and the gutters are finally choked with yesterday's papers and yesterday's dreams. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calford as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Sammy Hill was heard as Claire Scott, Betty Lou Gerson as Janet, Eddie Fields as Mr. Miller, and Bill Boucher as Robert Hill. Bill Anders speaking. Gangbusters get the true details of Chicago narcotics squad activities to nail elusive dope peddlers. You'll agree it takes nerve plus brains to snap the trap on illegal drug pushers when you've heard the cat and mouse game played by cops against a hook pusher. Remember, it's the case of the unanswered phone on Gangbusters later tonight on most of these same CBS radio stations. now rides to the tune of 26 million auto radios and listens most to the CBS radio network.